In this video, I want to show you one of my advanced calculus books. And this advanced calculus book is really old. It's called Methods of Advanced Calculus and it's by Franklin. Here's the inside of the book, Methods of Advanced Calculus. The quality of the materials used in the manufacture of this book is governed by continued post-war shortages. And you can tell because the pages are actually really thin. Now, despite the pages being very thin, I still think it's better quality than a lot of the newer books out there today. Methods of Advanced Calculus by Philip Franklin, PhD, Professor of Mathematics, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. So Philip went to Princeton for his PhD and then ended up working for many years at MIT. This book is from 1944. Let's read a little bit of the preface together. So this book has two principal objectives. First, to refresh and improve the reader's technique in applying elementary calculus. Second, to present those methods of advanced calculus, which are most needed in applied mathematics. The reader is assumed to have a working knowledge of calculus, but he needs no greater facility in the subject than that usually acquired and retained from a first course in the subject. Thus, the book may serve for reference or self-study by practicing engineers or applied scientists who need a stepping stone to the more formidable specialized mathematical treatises. As a textbook, it is suitable for a course in advanced calculus of a type now taken by many students whose major field of interest is engineering, mathematics, or science. So the author wrote this book with applied mathematicians in mind. This book contains a ton of mathematics. I've read various portions of the book and I've done a couple of the exercises and it's really quite good. You can see it's got all kinds of mathematics. Here you can see more of the topics. And while this is not a very thick book, it certainly does contain a ton of math. I mean, there's so much math in this little book. It's really impressive. And even though Franklin says that this book is targeted towards engineers, I really think everyone could actually benefit from a book like this. Really cool. Here's the rest of the content. And you notice here it says answers page 467. Let's take a look at that. Here are the answers to the exercises. And I was really shocked that this book contains answers to so many of the problems. Now, a lot of the proofs don't have solutions in the back of the book, but most of the computational exercises have solutions. I mean, look at all of these answers that you get. This is really, really rare for a book that's this old and rare in general for an advanced calculus book. Each of the chapters is broken up into little subsections, which I think is quite nice. For example, the first chapter has a subsection called elementary functions as its first subsection. The next subsection is on complex values. So here it talks a little bit about complex numbers and then it jumps pretty quickly over here to something much more advanced. It defines e to the z, sine z and cosine z in terms of a complex variable z. Here are some more subsections so you can see how it's laid out. Evaluation of functions of z, and then down here, hyperbolic functions. After you read and work through all 20 subsections in the first chapter, you get to the exercises, and there are tons of exercises that you can use to reinforce what you've learned in this book. I'm just gonna show you some of the exercises, and again, these are all from chapter one. I mean, look how many problems you get for practice, and again, most of them have solutions, but not all. Yeah, I've done quite a few of these, not all of them, but quite a few. And there's some more over here. I mean, look at all of these problems. So many exercises in this book, 106 problems in chapter one. Now that might seem like a lot, but realize that chapter one covers a lot of content. It's got 20 subsections, and this is an advanced calculus book. so. It's pretty heavy reading. This is definitely a book that you want to sit down with with a paper and pencil like I did here and carefully work through it so that you can fill in the missing gaps. Franklin does skip steps a lot of times and he just says, you know, this follows from five and six and you kind of have to put those pieces together to make sure. And I did that and I read a couple of the chapters and most of it made sense and I was really quite happy with the reading. Now Franklin does indicate that this is a book intended for you know engineers. However, I do think if you're an engineer and you get this book, you do need to have some math background. Obviously, the more math background you have, the better, but I really like old books like this. I just gotta give it a whiff. Oh yeah, smells so good. And again, even though the pages, uh, they say they're governed by the uh, continued shortages uh, due to the war, 
they still feel like they're pretty good quality, which is kind of nice. This is from the chapter on differential equations. So here they go through and they derive the formula for the integrating factor that you use to solve first order linear differential equations, which is pretty cool. Then he goes through and does a quick example over here. So this book does cover differential equations, which is quite nice. Here are some of the exercises in the section on differential equations. And I'll just pan the camera slowly so you can get a good look at them. And I believe this book is out of print. I don't know if it's easy to find, but what I'll try to do is after I make this video, I'll go online and I'll see if I can find a copy and put a link in the description in case you decide to pick it up. It's kind of an interesting old book on advanced calculus. One thing I really like about this book is the size and it's just a really good size. It's not too big, it's not too small. Yeah, just a really nice little book. Let's give it a whiff. Ah, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just a good size. You can take it with you. It's not super big and bulky like a lot of the newer books. And for the most part, at least my copy uh, lays pretty flat. It seems like the previous owner didn't do much reading uh, from this book. They maybe read like the first few pages, but a lot of this book looks pretty new. So my copy's in really, really good condition. Apparently the previous owner was H.D. Moses. I don't know who that was and they're from Nashville, Tennessee. And I put a little piece of paper there to cover their address because it's probably still a working address. Yeah, 16, so maybe they paid $16 for it. And then here's their last name again, Moses. So should you buy this book? My opinion is if you can afford it and if you can find it at a good price, then absolutely yes. Is it a perfect book? No, I found that when reading this book, you know, you do need a piece of paper and a pencil because it is an advanced calculus book. So you're going to want to write things down and fill in the missing steps. It is certainly not a perfect book, but the fact that it's written the way it is means that it's targeted for engineers who want to learn advanced calculus. So if you're an engineering student or even a math major and you're thinking about learning advanced calculus, my advice is get as many advanced calculus books as you can get because it's a really hard subject. I just have to smell it because I just, oh, smells so good. I was flipping through the pages and I just, I just caught a whiff of just like some ancient mathematics. The fact that this book contains answers to almost all of the problems, I think is a really big plus. It would have been really nice, however, if Franklin included answers to the proofs. Also, the only other con I think is that, well, it's still tough to read, right? Because of the advanced calculus, you're going to have to sit down with a piece of paper and a pencil and fill in the details if you really wanna understand everything. At the same time, you could just read it without a paper and a pencil, but there's gonna be a lot of things that you don't really understand and that you can't really verify unless you actually pick up a pencil and verify it like I did here. Here's some of my work from my last reading of this textbook. I should mention that sometimes the author omits certain proofs and that's because he's proved them in his other book. It's called Treatise on Advanced Calculus. And that is a much more rigorous book than this one, okay? So this book is not nearly as rigorous as his other book, but this book is still very rigorous. It is still an advanced calculus book and it's still worth picking up, I think. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Again, the book is called Methods of Advanced Calculus, and it is by Franklin. Good luck and take care.